Hi friends! Welcome to Kitchen Princess Bamboo Japanese Everyday Food. Today we are making chicken curry from homemade curry roux. In the last video, we made a homemade curry roux and we are making chicken curry from it. This homemade curry roux is the base of Japanese curry. You can make beef curry or chicken curry or even pork curry from this. And you can customize by adding seasonings of your choice. Let's get started. First, we are making chicken broth from leftover ingredients from the homemade curry roux. I hope you keep the cooked onions and garlic and ginger. If you are not, just keep this process. Put a couple of pieces of bay leaves and leftover onion, garlic, and ginger in the pot and pour in the chicken stock. I am using rich chicken stock, but you can use any chicken stock you can access, or even the chicken soup paste or chicken stock cube and water works just fine. Simmer for 20 to 30 minutes to draw out all the umami from the onions and other ingredients. While simmering the stock, let's prepare the ingredients. Cut your onion in half and then slice into 5 mm thick slices. Cut your carrot into small bite-sized pieces while rotating the carrot. The carrot is a bit too big, so we are using 3 quarters of it. It's about 150 grams in weight. Peel your potatoes and cut into bite size and soak in water to remove excess starch. Choose russet potatoes, which is not lose its shape in the cooking process. Chicken thigh is cut into bite size pieces and seasoned with just a little bit of salt and sake. Heat your deep frying pan or pot. I am using a wok or medium heat and then pan fry the chicken until the surface is golden brown. Take out the chicken and set aside. In the same pan, Add in sliced onions and cook until golden brown. It's going to take 7 to 8 minutes until it looks like this. You don't have to cook until caramelized. Brown onion add more flavor, good enough to make tasty curry. Add in carrot and potato and stir until heat is through. Put your chicken back in and pour the chicken stock passing through a sieve. Squeeze out all the umami as much as you can. Simmer for 20 minutes until the chicken and vegetables cook through. Skim off the scum occasionally. Add in homemade curry roux and seasonings of your choice. I am adding Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce and ketchup and sugar. You might think that seasonings are too much, but this is a very classic combination since the recipe was invented in Japan. It's a very old-fashioned but authentic Japanese curry rice. Maybe you are surprising at the amount of the sugar which is not considered as one of the seasonings of the curry. 
but in Japan, sugar is often used to building the taste. The umami, salt, sugar, and other seasonings combined together, and it creates the complex taste that Japanese people like. Sima on low heat for 10 minutes until it looks like this. Thanks to the homemade curry roux, the chicken curry looks smooth and shiny and very rich in taste. Give it a taste and adjust the taste by adding salt if you think it's not enough. Sprinkle freshly ground black pepper and garam masala. To bring out all the spiciness. We usually preferred the light and simple dishes like grilled fish and simmered vegetables, but the curry rice is an exception. Not only curry rice, but other Western style Japanese dish called yoshoku is supposed to be like this. The chicken curry is really aromatic and mild. For the first bite, but the spiciness is coming after and it's really comfortable. Today I serve with my brown rice, which has been freezed for this kind of occasion. But you can definitely substitute with white rice or multi grain rice. You can refer to my How to Cook Perfect Rice video to how to prepare the rice. But in any case, you want to choose. Short grain rice, not long grain rice. For the condiment, I put the gari, which usually is served with sushi, to cut the spiciness with its sourness and crunchiness. You can serve with sour pickles instead. The curry sauce and rice go e s so well together, and the chicken is cooked well and Observes the spiciness, it tastes so good. And I love the soft potato in the curry. Everything is just perfect. I hope you will give this recipe a try in this summer. I will show you Vermont curry style steak curry in the next video. Give it a try and let me know how you like it. Thank you for watching the video. Give me a big thumbs up and share the video with your friends and families. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social media and tag me on your post if you give it a try. And go to my website for the printable recipe and more information. And my store on Amazon has pretty much everything that I'm using in my video. Thanks again, and I will see you soon. Bye!